Joining me now at The Cove Restaurant and Lounge in Holden Beach is Mary Ann Harris. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So you started this restaurant very recently. You've been open for a few months now, and it's a farm-to-table restaurant right here yes. on Highway 130, Holden Beach Road, going towards Holden Beach. And we're so excited to have you here in Brunswick County. So tell I'm me about... to be here. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> tell me why you decided to start The Cove and, you know, what sets us apart and um, it's a farm to table restaurant. Yes. So. Well, we first came down to North Carolina. We bought some land. We wanted to get into farming and um, our dream was to produce a lot of our own food and we had a restaurant in New Jersey and we looked in this area and found that there was a, a big need for a different type of venue um, and a restaurant that would be open year round. So we decided to open the Cove and provide people with some healthy choices and farm to table with at a reasonable price. And the Cove is, as you said, it's open year round, mm -hmm. so that's exciting. I know it's great to have another year round choice for, for dining in, in Brunswick mm -hmm. County. Um, farm to table, tell me more about that. Um, you all have me starting a farm, or have you started the farm? We we planted some hay. We okay. are just getting ready to start our greenhouses. We do have a small herb garden in the front of the building, um, but we um, we our plan is to really produce a lot of our own herbs and and produce ourselves. But we also like to support all the local fishermen and. Uh, farmers in the area as best that we can. We try and use all local produce when possible. Um, very big on meats being no hormones, no antibiotics. We do cage-free eggs. Um, we like to, everything on our menu is made from scratch. It, nothing is out of a can. It's all made fresh. I imagine that does make a big difference in mm -hmm. quality, whereas you know, some places that you go to, you know, you can tell it's cheap or it's, you know, comes from the you know, food service truck. But yeah. here it's not like that. Y'all are using high quality high ingredients. High quality ingredients, the freshest ingredients as possible. Um, right down to our cocktails. Oh, okay. um, this is a Asian pear martini that we garnish with fresh rosemary sprig that we, you know, grow ourselves. And our famous Bloody Mary that we make ourselves, and we mm -hmm. serve those on Sundays for our. We are open breakfast, lunch, and dinner on Sundays. Um, so yeah, as much as possible. Okay, use. so the foods high quality, fresh, mm -hmm. and farm to table. Tell me about this, your staff, and who do you have working in the kitchen? Well, I have my husband in the kitchen, and we have two other chefs back there. I also have my mother-in-law. So it is a family-run business. My um, daughter works here. My, my, you know, my other children are involved. So it is definitely a family-run business. Um, I have a great staff. Um, they're very supportive. They've been with me since we opened. It's only been a few months, but they, they understand the concept that I want when my customers come in, that I want them to feel comfortable, and they know my staff by name. Uh, again, trying to promote local business um, mm -hmm. provide something for the locals you know, to offer them a place to come that they feel comfortable with their family and friends. Yeah, and it's great to have another option mm -hmm. here locally. You said Sunday brunch. That's mm -hmm. something that there's not too many places offering yeah. locally, so it's cool to have another option for that, especially for sure. the brunch bill is passed mm -hmm. in North Carolina, so yes. you're able to, to offer the Bloody Marys on Sunday at, mm -hmm. at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. When you all open for brunch? We actually open at 11, at 11. and okay. then we get right into lunch and dinner. We are open seven days a week. We are open uh, other than major holidays, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and Thanksgiving are the only days we close. Okay, so. and uh, what has the reception been like from the community? Very, 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 very good. Um, people seem to really love it. Um, they, they, we are right now five stars. We do our best, like I said, to accommodate. We have our frequent dining cards okay, that we offer to our right customers. Here. Mm -hmm, where they can, locals can come in and they fill out a frequent dining card mm -hmm. and that will allow every time they spend $200 they'll get $10 back um, or off their check. We also offer gift cards for um, okay. for, for the holiday season. That's right. We're also featuring you know, buy $100 worth of gift cards get a $10 gift card mm -hmm. back. Um, we're very big on helping the community, promoting the anything that the community needs as far as fundraising. We do give a 20% discount for veterans and also for first responders. And 
I want to talk about the name, the Cove. Where does that come from? And well, what, what went into formulating this restaurant and how, and how you wanted to make it mm -hmm. feel and, and the atmosphere? Okay. Well, um, I am a retired special ed teacher from New Jersey, and when the end of the year was coming, I had mentioned to the students that if I were to open up another restaurant, I would name it after what they had we created was called the Highlander Cove and it was a specialty shop that I developed for students with disabilities to build their self-confidence and money skills so um, when I, it came about that we actually did buy another restaurant and how perfect down by the beach yeah, the cove right. actually fit very well so they were very excited when I told them that I was opening a restaurant in remembrance of them and all our years together running the Highlander Cove. So that's kind of how I came up with the name, The Cove. Uh, I see your husband Dion is here, Marianne, yeah. bringing us a couple of the dishes that you have here at The Cove. These look delicious. <laughs> so tell me about some of what y'all offer. Okay, well this is our ahi tuna. It is a sushi grade tuna with some um, wasabi. Sesame seeds. And sesame seeds. Want to describe the seafood linguine? Yeah, seafood linguine. We have local shrimp, scallops from the uh, uh, Outer Banks, clams, mussels, and a scampi sauce. Okay, so North Carolina shrimp and yeah. and uh, mussels, scampi. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Tell me about some of the other things, Marianne, that y'all offer. Well, we I, I, we offer we have a pretty big menu. I would say we sell a lot of really a little a lot of everything. Yeah. Um, our steaks are very popular. Um, they're Angus. Yep, Angus our ribeyes are all Angus steaks. Hey, ribeyes. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of that's probably one of our biggest signs as far as the meats. Since we've been down here, people are saying, "Oh, steakhouse." So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, it wasn't yeah. we're all around yeah. house. I do a lot of sauté. Okay, and you all have I guess, appetizers. Tell me about yeah. your appetizers. We have coconut shrimp. We have a homemade hummus, homemade guacamole. We try and bring in a a, a little bit for everybody. Offer some vegetarian items, you know, some that, you know, um, I don't know what I want to say, a little bit, just a little bit for everybody. You okay. Know, fried coconut shrimp. Um, so if with, there's something on the menu that's going to every, appeal to your taste. Yes. Yeah, everything from pastas to steaks to uh, seafood to salads, mm -hmm. we do a wonderful Which we do salads. have a, one of our. Yes. Delicious berry salads. This is um, <laughs> that looks good. we do seasonal kind of again <laughs> seasonal berries um, uh -huh. locally um, okay. that we purchase. So this has some and they're brandy fetiches. brandy candy walnuts, mm -hmm. which is uh, just something to give a little okay. flavor to that. So we offer something for everyone. Uh, if there's a vegetarian, if there's somebody that needs gluten free, we actually have a vegetarian burger and a gluten free mm -hmm. bun roll for okay. the for the burgers. Um, and I imagine being a farm-to-table restaurant, y'all's menu does change seasonally depending mm -hmm. on what's out there. Yes. And so there may be something new, a new special every time you come in. Absolutely. Yeah, we run, run, specials, run yeah. a lot of specials. All right. So uh, The Cove and Holden Beach. Uh, Marianne, tell us where we can find y'all um, on Facebook, on Facebook we website. Have, all um, that good website, it, uh, we're still in the process of okay. building, but we are on Facebook. Um, so we can always look us up all there. All right. And uh, where are all located and what phone number can folks call to make reservations? We are reservation? located on 2633 Holden Beach Road, Supply, North Carolina. We're only four minutes from the beach, um, which is wonderful. You can look us up on Facebook. We have a Facebook page when we always put on our specials and different events. We do have music on Thursday nights now and any of our holiday specials coming up. You can always look on Facebook to get that information. Our phone number is 910-846-2633. All right, so hopefully folks will call, make a reservation, and check you yes. all out. Okay. All right, Mary Ann, Dion, thank you so much thank for you. letting us come out and check out The Cove. All right, all right. wonderful, thank you. We're here at Companion Cremation Services in Supply, and joining me now is Katie Mae Garner, and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So this is a pretty new business that you've started, brand new building, and you specialize in helping families say goodbye to their loved 
beloved pets. Exactly. We opened up probably about March of this year. Things really took off in April. And we just make the difficult task of parting with a beloved pet as easy as possible for the owners. Yeah, and that's very important because people love their pets and they really are part of people's families. That's exactly right. We treat them just as if they are a family member, exactly as a, a human would be treated in their afterlife care. So tell me about what Companion Cremation Services does. It's, of course, you can take care of things, you know, after a pet passes away, but you go beyond that and help memorialize. Well, well. Um, we offer private and communal cremations, private being just your pet being cremated by itself. A communal cremation is a bit more cost effective if you're just looking for a means to um, dispose of your pet after your pet passes, but you don't necessarily want to keep the cremains. That would be a communal cremation. And we do have beautiful farmland surrounding our building where we can dispose of ashes after a communal cremation takes place. So it is still a dignified manner of disposing of your pet, but you don't get the cremains back to you. And we do pre-planning as well. That takes a lot of the pain out of any kind of aftercare uh, process in that you just kind of take care of it before that day happens. You can go ahead and pick out a specialty urn if you want something to be ordered or um, just any kind of specialty cremains product. We can order that ahead of time and it also just locks in a price. That way, if your pet passes 10 months from now and we happen to have raised our prices, you still have that same price that you yeah, paid good. when you pre-plan. And then also 24 hour, 365 days a year service. If your pet happens to pass on a Saturday at four o'clock in the afternoon, we will come to your house and pick up your pet. It's no problem to us. We are locals. We live really close to our facility, um, both my dad and myself. So it's no problem to run around the county and pick up an animal. What made you want to go into this line of business? Uh, we are an animal loving family and I say that to the extreme. I mean, our animals are part of our everyday lives and always have been. And I wanted to be a veterinarian growing up and I did not get into vet school. And I just kind of did odd and ends jobs after college, um, not really knowing what I wanted to do or where my place was in life. And my father as well, he owned a hardware store for several, several years. And when it closed, he also did odds and end jobs, just trying to find something to do for the rest of his life because he wasn't ready to retire. He ended up working for White Funeral Home and he is human cremation certified. He didn't really think he would do anything with that in life, but he is human cremation certified. He said that people call probably twice a week asking if they do cremate pets and uh, human cremators do not cremate pets. Mm -hmm. You don't mix the two. So he said, hey, you wanna open an animal crematorium? And he caught me on the right day at my job and I said, yes, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Enthusiastically. Hey, Katie May, what, um, when should somebody be thinking about you know, the pre-planning? I thought that was interesting. What, is there a right time for uh, that? Unfortunately, people probably don't think about doing it until their, their pet shows some sign of ill health or passing in the future. But I mean, any time's a good time to do it. If your pet is in great health, that's a good time to do it because you're in the right state of mind. You can think mm -hmm. clearly and you might as well just go ahead and take care of it so that when the day comes and your pet does pass, you can just easily pass them on to us mm -hmm. and we'll take care of everything and you can just be at peace. So that's what you're here for is to help comfort yes, people definitely. Through, through the process mm -hmm. of losing their you know, furry friend. And um, another thing I wanted to ask was, do you just do dogs and cats or do you do a wide range of pets? We are technically a small animal crematorium. We can cremate up to 300 pounds. Okay. So if you have a goat that is your companion, your best mm -hmm. friend, we would happily cremate your goat. I haven't had a goat, but it's mostly cats and dogs that we do see. We have cremated a bird. We have cremated turtles, and we also do good Samaritan cremations, as in any kind of roadkill that someone might bring into an animal hospital, we'll happily cremate that as well, because every every animal deserves that piece. Absolutely. And what is the process um, when somebody comes in? Uh, what's the first step when somebody comes in for your services? Well, m for the most part, we do pick up animals that have passed from animal hospitals. Occasionally, we do have people that actually come into our facility and do the pre-planning or bring their pet in or we pick their pet up from their house. 
but then we would um, cremate based on weight and the price does vary based on the weight of the animal. Of course, the larger the animal, the more um, time it takes to cremate, so the price does increase. But we cremate their animal. Their animal is reduced to bone matter, white bone matter, and then we actually grind that bone matter into the ash material. And then we place it into the urn. And we also put a disc, an ID disc, with the animal. So that accompanies the animal from start to finish. So there's never any question of whether that animal is yours or not. So the specific animal has an ID number associated with it from start to finish. And the, um, once the cremation process is done and, and everything, what do you do to help memorialize someone's pet? We place the cremains in a very nice urn. It's polyvinyl wood out of Brazil. It's a nice cherry finish. We also give an engravable ID tag that can be placed on the urn and it can be engraved say, saying whatever you would like it to say, the pet's name, their, their date of life, um, really anything, nickname, saying. Um, so they can put that on the urn as well, but pretty much anything you can think of, we can order. We specialty order mm -hmm. lots of different types of urns, keepsake, okay. keepsake jewelry. We have, um, some of the items that are behind us. Yeah. Some of the items that are behind us. We also do a paw print. I failed to mention that. That is, that Play is the, paw print. yes, that's one of the most important mm -hmm. things. People really, really look forward to getting that paw print. And honestly, that's the most stressful part of the job for me because I want to make sure that paw print is the best possible for the for the owner Absolutely. and um some of the specialty urns that we offer are locally made we have a local wood maker that makes some and we also have some clay urns that can be ordered as well now, if somebody is working with their vet um what can they do if they want to use you for your services most vets in the area do use us solely so they can just um you know take their their animal to their local animal hospital and they don't have to worry about anything. The veterinary hospital contacts us and we do return cremains to the animal hospital. But if for some reason their veterinary hospital doesn't use us, they can certainly just ask for us and we would be happy to, to go to that animal hospital. We can travel anywhere really, we don't mind at all. So Katie May, you have a very unique business. Thank you so much for allowing us to come and, and check it out. And uh, now we know that there's a place for folks here in Brunswick County to um, memorialize and remember their, uh, their beloved pets. Yes, uh, we are here and we are happy to serve anyone and we just... And you serve the entire county? Oh yeah, the entire so from county. Leland to Calabash? Certainly. All the way down to Southport. Yeah, even in um, North Myrtle and Little River. Oh, wow, We've traveled okay. across the line a couple of times as well and we don't mind doing that at all. All right. And as we close out our time together, um, tell me your contact information, such as your website and um, phone number. Sure. We are located at 65 Sellers Road, right in supply by Brunswick Animal Hospital. Our website is companioncremations.com. Our email address is companioncremations at gmail.com. And our phone number is 910-754-7166. And anytime you call that number, it'll go straight to a cell phone if for some reason it's after hours. So we can always be reached. Right. Are you on social media as we well? We are. We can also be found on Facebook. All right. Well, thank you so much, Katie May. Thank you. at Brody Dogs, located here in Leland. Thanks so much for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so Lee, you own several businesses in the community, um, but this is your newest. So tell me about where the idea of Brody Dogs started and why you decided to open up a hot dog shop right here in Leland. Okay, well, we owned a boutique next door, and I had the opportunity to get this small building, and it's 600 square feet. So I'm out in the parking lot actually trying to decide what I want to do with it, and I'd been and seen some uh, olive oil and uh, spice companies. And I thought, that's a really neat concept. But as I was standing out here and looking around, I realized it wasn't a good location for it. So I was trying to figure out what was good here. And I'm looking at the Hardee's and the Bojangles and the Waffle House and McDonald's and Taco Bell. And I'm thinking, well, everybody does hamburgers. Yeah. But nobody like specializes in hot dogs. It's a small building, it doesn't take much to do that, so that's what I want to do. I'll specialize in hot dogs. So that's kind of how that idea came about. Yeah, and this is the only specialty hot dog shop in Leland. 
right now. Yeah, right now. So um, that's such a great idea to have a local business right here amongst all the change. You know, a place for people to stop in for lunch and grab something real quick. You know, or to bring the family for an affordable you know, dinner, or um, take something and get it to go and bring it home. Uh, tell me about your menu. So you have some specialty dogs. Yeah, when we decided to do this, you know, obviously the first thing you want to do is, well, for me, I don't want to do anything that's like haphazard. We don't want to do a low quality product. So we tried, we tested a lot of hot dogs trying to look for a quality product that people recognize. So what we came to realize is there's so many people that have moved in from different areas. Sabrettes seem to ring truer and truer and truer. So we actually tried that in comparison to some of the other hot dogs in the era area and it was a an outstanding hot dog it's all beef it's never frozen there are no fillers and there are there's no uh, uh what do you call it um, gluten. artificial there's no gluten in it like no which gluten. is a big okay. deal today uh, with the gluten-free diets that have come about so uh that's kind of how we come out with the sabrette hot dog and then basically my my wife's father served them hot dogs every friday night it was like his deal <laughs> you know and so his, his favorite hot dog just had mustard and uh, chili and onions and um, slaw on it. So we, we said, okay, well, we need to kind of look at our family members and see what they like, and then look at our neighbors and see what they like. So that's how we came up with the different combinations. And then we looked online and got a few, but the, the one that we named after my father-in-law is Papa John, because that was his name. Oh, I see. And that one has, I'm looking at the menu now, it's off to our, our left. Uh, it's a, Yellow mustard, chili onions, and slaw. Exactly the way he said, liked to eat. Exactly it. the way he had it. And then the Brody dog, that's, that must be your signature dog. It is our signature dog. That came from uh, a little bit of online research, and uh, I love bacon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <he laughs> so <doesn't. laughs> it's a bacon wrapped hot dog, you know, deep fried. It's got cheddar cheese on it, and our special homemade Brody sauce, wow. which you can only get at Brody Dogs. Wow. So that's how we came up with the Brody Dog, and it is our number one seller. People really like it. And then there's the Kent, which is your obviously <laughs> my last name. So what we did is we make homemade pimento cheese, and we kind of took the Papa John idea and said, well, we got to make it a little bit different. So we put pimento cheese on it as well, mm -hmm. which gives it a totally different taste, but it's pretty awesome. All right, and I mean, there are several specialty dogs. I don't know if we have the time to talk about all of them, so people are gonna have to come stop by in and check it out, go online, see your menu. Um, how about some of the other selections you have? I know you have, uh, one part of your menu says if you can't hang with the dogs. So if you can't hang with the dogs, what can you get? Well, basically we did that section of the menu because everybody's not always in the mood for a hot dog. So we had to have some alternatives to that. So we do make homemade pimento uh, mm. salad in-house. In so you can have a grilled homemade pimento uh, salad sandwich, which is really, really good. Mm. You can have pimento cheese on a bed of lettuce with a boiled egg and a uh, slice of cheddar cheese with it, with crackers as a, as a side salad. Uh, we have a homemade rotisserie chicken salad that we do a, a grilled sandwich with. We also do that as a side salad, and we do a, one where we com combine the uh, chicken salad and the pimento cheese together over chopped lettuce with a boiled egg and cheese sticks and crackers and top that off with a celery salt, and it's pretty outstanding. So those are two things that are signature to us. We also uh, got a uh, sweet Italian sausage. People ask about kielbasa or sausage dogs and things of that nature which I didn't want to do that, but I wanted something similar. So we came out and I went to a food show and I found a sweet Italian sausage and it's outstanding. And we do that with grilled onions and peppers and whatever else you might like on it. So it's really, really good. Uh, we did add a hamburger to our menu. So anything that we have that goes on a hot dog can also go on a hamburger. And a, a hamburger we partner with Piggly Wiggly over here and they grind our meat fresh every day. Right. And we bring it over here. We ball it up in a quarter ounce pound of uh, four ounces of meat, ball it up, put it in the refrigerator. When you order it, we stick that ball on the grill, smash it with the weight, salt and pepper. It's an old fashioned hamburger. So it's really, really good. And of course, you can also build your own hot dog as well. You can build your own hot dog if you don't like any of the selections that we have currently uh -huh. on the menu. And with that, uh, mustard, ketchup, and uh, mayonnaise is always just, if you want it, you got it. And then we have standard, what we call standard toppings and what we call deluxe toppings. So you get two standards, one deluxe at the same cost that it's posted at. You can add anything for a little of the upcharge. Has anybody come up with a combination on their own that uh, has been interesting or stuck out to actually, you? Or? Actually, they have. I've got a, we, we partner with Forever Friends because 
we kind of, it's a dog concept. It's a hot dog. I uh -huh. named it after my dog. So one of the things that we do uh, is we give 1% of our monthly sales to Forever Friends, which is a, is a group organized to help take care of uh, dogs and help get them uh, the medical care that they need and also they help adopt them uh -huh. out. So I have a lot of friends over at Cape Side Animal Hospital who sponsors Forever Friends. And the, the girls over there came over and said, I'd like to have a hot dog with peanut butter on it. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, really? They said, yeah. So <laughs> we made a hot dog just specially for them, and we call it the Cape Side. And it has peanut butter and slaw on it. Uh, okay. And they come over once a week, and they order their special dog. Wow, so if anybody's <laughs> up for it, come by Brody Dogs and try the Cape Side. Ask for the Cape Side, and they'll know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you about Brody. That's, that's your dog. Tell yep. us about him. And well, I always had big dogs all my life. About three years ago, I was at a, like a yard sale thing, and they had little puppies. And I just wanted to see them. I already had three dogs at home. I didn't need a puppy. So I walked over there, and I picked this little thing up, and he was a Datsun. And I put him right here, and he laid his little head on my chest, and that was the end of it. Aww. And we've been best buddies ever since. <laughs> so we came to name this place. My mother looked at me and said, well, that's kind of a no-brainer. You have a hot dog dog. <laughs> Why don't you name it after your dog? So that's how Brody that's Dogs how came Brody about. Brody Dogs came to be. Lee, is there anything else that you want to mention that really sets um, Brody Dogs apart from other restaurants here in Northern Brunswick County? Well, there's a couple of things I mentioned a little earlier. We have our own signature sauce. It's called Brody Sauce. It's a mayonnaise base, but people have fell in love with it. They really like it. They're trying to buy it from me by the court. Uh, I haven't figured out how to do that or have not really made that move to do that. So that signature Brody sauce is really good to mention. We do carry regular French fries and sweet potato fries. And it warrants a little talk about the sweet potato fries. They are processed, they're sourced, processed, right here in North Carolina out of Pembroke. So okay. they grow them and they process them and they warehouse them and they sell them out of Pembroke. Uh, with that, we also have a special sauce we call spe uh, sassy sauce, and it's a honey, uh, cinnamon, buttery sauce that goes on. It's kind of like you, what you'd put on a sweet potato fluff without the pecans, and you dip your sweet potato fries in that, and they are outstanding. One other item that I'd like to mention is we also carry potato knishes, and I didn't know what that was, but that is a staple up in the New York area, and the street vendors sell them. And a neighbor of mine mentioned to me that we needed to get those. And I've got them, and they're brought in fresh every two weeks by a truck from New York with my Sabret hot dogs. And we sell a lot of them. And people say they're really good. They're spot on from what they were used to as they grew up that are from that area. Yeah, Lee, I also can tell you know, your customer service is key here. Because we came in, we were setting up you know, to do our interview, and you were helping folks uh, navigate the menu and try to find something that they like. And I thought that was a a great thing for you all to do and I'm sure your staff helps people when they come in if they're looking for the right thing to, to eat. Well, I, I appreciate that. We, we kind of pride ourselves in that. The only reason I wanted to be in the restaurant business is I was in it for 20 years, 17 years prior to now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I miss about it and I enjoyed about it so much was the customers. People are very interesting. They can be very, very entertaining and, and our job is to serve them. That's what we're here for. All right, Lee, well, thank you so much for uh, letting us come out and check out Brody Dogs. Uh, as we leave, tell our viewers where they can find you all here in Leland and uh, your you know, Facebook and things like that. Okay, well, we're here in Leland at 103A Village Road. Uh, that's in the Food Lion parking lot behind the Hardys and the Bojangles mm -hmm. on the left-hand side of the strip mall that Subway's in. Okay, so right here in Old Leland, as it's called. And some people do call yeah. it Old Leland. Uh, you'll see over time that Old Leland will be revamped. Oh, yeah. And you can notice that by pulling out of the drive down here and looking to your left and seeing the skyscrapers that are being <laughs> built. Uh, uh, we do have a Facebook. It's Brody Dogs. You can look on there and you can get some information. Uh, I know we're on Yelp. Some very nice customers have put us on there and Travel Advisor. There's a few. Uh, uh, reviews. Uh, reviews and things, things. on there. Okay. We've been very fortunate. People have been very kind to us in the reviews. So. All right. Well, thank you, Lee. It was, well, thank you. It was a thank pleasure. you very much for having us.
And that'll do it for this month's show. If you have a question, a suggestion, or a comment for us here on Brunswick Biz, give us a call at 755-1770 or visit us at atmctv.com. I'm Nathan Evers reminding you to shop local, and we'll see you next month on Brunswick Biz, connecting Brunswick County one business at a time.